help! My dog keeps on licking his feet and scratching his ears and shaking his head. This show is for Sarah Sapet. Sapet, I'm sorry if I said your name wrong, but this is for Sarah. Okay, here we go. We got a long show. Well, not really. We just have a lot of stuff to cover. Now, just for the record, I just spotted Sarah's question, which brought to the surface a little issue that I'm facing as well. Also, a disclaimer, I am not a vet. I'm just a regular, responsible, overly protective pet parent, and I'm also into holistic alternatives. Now, if the issue persists, then I would suggest that you take your little baby off to the vet. But I have a funny feeling that this could possibly work. And there's a couple of things that you need to ask yourself or see if this could be the case. Red ants. Did your little baby walk into a pile of mean little red ants? Those little red ants, you've probably been bitten by them, cause the same issues with little pets. Okay, so make sure that your pet is not walking around in a red ant pile. Ooh, those little mean stinkers. Maybe go for a walk and have a can of raid with you. Dr. Howard Small, Forest Lake Animal Clinic up in Sarasota, Florida, he says symptoms of ant bites and stings might include lameness, if the injury is to the paws or feet, hives, chewing, or licking at the affected area, and swelling. And in case of a more serious situation, anaphylactic reaction, which is, is an exaggerated allergic reaction to a foreign protein resulting from previous exposure to it, and it being red ants in this case. A dog with anaphylactic reaction might suffer from vomiting or collapse or weakness or respiratory distress and pale gums. Now, if your dog has been bitten by red ants, you need to do this. Make a baking soda paste and apply it to the ant bites. So you're going to pour some baking soda in a small little bowl, add a few drops of water at a time while mixing it into a thick paste. And you're going to thread the paste on top of and a few inches around each of the affected ant bite area. You might want to get an ace bandage, wrap it around the area if you can, you know, to keep the paste in place. Now, baking soda, it relieves the pain and it reduces the swelling from ant bites naturally. And, you know, hey, look, us humans, we use baking soda paste for bee stings or wasp stings. Now, if they didn't step into a red ant pile, then smell your dog. Yup, I said smell your dog. Smell their little ears. Smell their coat. And if the smell smells a little funky, as in perhaps a yeast issue, and that's the case with me, it's time to address it naturally, of course. Now, on the screen, you're probably going to see some items. First of all, you see that evil dog collar. And you also see a spray bottle. And you see some coconut oil and some apple cider vinegar. Mm-hmm. Yep. What is not pictured is hydrogen peroxide. Now, I'm going to give you two alternatives. The first one is a 50-50 mix of hydrogen peroxide and organic apple cider vinegar. And this is per instructions from a vet, from a gal whose vet treated her dog with this solution and successful at it. What you want to do is you want to get a little spray bottle, make a 50-50 mix of the hydrogen peroxide and the apple cider vinegar, and you want to mist the inside of your dog's ear with it. And you want to let it sit there for about 15 minutes. And then what you want to do is you want to gently clean inside of the ear. And then after it's all dry, you want to add, take a little bit of coconut oil and rub it all inside the inner part of the ear okay and you want to repeat that process for you know, until you see results you should be seeing results within three days if you don't then I would suggest that you of course zip off to the vet now with little Skippy the amazing three-legged Shih Tzu that's a different ball of wax Skippy suffers from chronic I guess yeast infections and you know I attribute it to his crummy diet He's on a special medicated diet or whatever, and I just absolutely hate it. It's for Struphite crystals, and lately he's been smelling a little funky, and now we're going to have to go into, we'll say, changing his diet 
I'm going completely natural and organic with his food. No more of that medicated food for him. And to treat his ear issue and his licking issue. For his licking issue, I am using two things, which you're probably going to laugh at. First of all, we're using a 50-50 mix of apple cider vinegar with water. Okay? And I am spraying it directly on the itching area. And in this case, it's his paws. You want to make sure that it's rubbed in really well. And then after it dries, you want to take a little bit of coconut oil, rub it in your hands, and rub it real good into the affected area. Coconut oil is absolutely amazing. It has antibacterial products or, or, or whatever. You know what I'm talking about. It's just amazing. Research coconut oil. It's phenomenal. Okay? You can also add, i probably say maybe a half a teaspoon, depending on what size your dog is. You can also add it into their food, and it will make their coat real soft and shiny. It's really good for them. And in regards to his ear, you're going to love this, especially the ladies. <laughs> you're going to get yeast infection medication, either a three-day or a seven-day treatment. Now, it's highly suggested that you get the suppositories. Ladies, you know what I'm talking about. There's Monistat 7 that's out there, and there's other products. But um, the suppositories are much easier to work with. And what you're going to do is you're going to cut the suppository in half, put one half in one ear and the other half in the other ear. Believe me, it's going to dissolve. But before you do that, you want to clean it out pretty good. You know, you could clean it out with uh, a witch hazel solution. And in my case, I cleaned his ear out <laughs> with the medicated anti-relief itching soothing wipes, and uh, which actually instantaneously helped him. Literally, instantaneously helped him. And then what I did was I took the Monistat 7 cream because they didn't have suppositories and I, I didn't use the seven day treatment syringe. I took a syringe that was just a little bit smaller, maybe by, by, by a half an inch, okay? And I squeezed half of the solution or cream into one ear, mixed it very well, you know, around his ear and inside his ear and also the other ear. And I have to say, hey, um, he's not scratching or itching at all. Zero. And he could hear me too. Now, sometimes a dog will chew out of maybe nervousness or maybe habit or, you know, not giving the medication or treatment time to even work. And that is why I have the infamous Victorian dog collar. And you can pick them up over at Petco. They start at like $8 to maybe $14, depending on size. You don't, I repeat, you do not want to get that real soft one. You want to get the hard plastic one. And you also want to get duct tape to make sure that it doesn't, uh, we'll say, come apart. And you want to keep it because you never know when you're going to use or need that Victorian collar. I mean, I've used a collar for both of my dogs, and even though they're both two different sizes, so I have two different ones, but they've come in handy, especially when they start itching or gnawing at something, okay? Because sometimes you have to keep them away from the affected area for a little bit in order for it to heal. And if they keep on licking at it, they're not going to be able to heal properly, okay? Now for a yeasty tummy or armpits and paws and just yeasty skin in general, make a 50-50 mix of organic apple cider vinegar. Again, you know, I, I think just a regular apple cider vinegar will do and water and coconut oil. You're going to spray the areas, wipe them down with a damp cloth using the 50-50 mix. And then after the skin dries, you're going to rub in the coconut oil. And yep, they'll be a little greasy, but for me, that's okay. And hopefully, you'll see an improvement quickly. However, continue for, let's say, one or two days. And during that length of time, you should see an improvement. 
Now, some people use, are you ready for this? Selsun Blue. Yes, you heard me correctly. Selsun Blue. Now, of course, you're not going to use Selsun Blue in their ears or on their head. You want to maybe use a baby shampoo for that. But this is for their general body. And I'm including links below for this little video. There's two commercials. I just click skip uh, when the notice kicks in uh, for them both. But here's the point that I want to be very, very clear on. First, you need to find the cause, which could very well be their diet. You see, when the yeast fungus starts to grow in the gut, it destroys the mucus lining of the intestinal wall, which is the protective lining. The digestive tract is a closed system, much like a real septic tank system, okay? And it's designed to keep the waste toxicities from... I have a speech problem from leaking through the walls of the digestive system and into the bloodstream. And when the mucus lining is broken down due to the fungus growing out of control and the fungus dies off, it allows the body toxins and waste to leak through the walls of the digestive tract and into the bloodstream. And in short, it's like the body is becoming septic, which makes the problem worse. And as the fungus dies off and decays, the waste from the fungus yeast alone can make the dog sick. So when the toxins leak into the body, a whole cascade of events starts to take place. One of which is the alteration of the pH of the gut, bladder, and reproductive organs. Now, the changes in the body are the symptoms you recognize when you have yeast overgrowth. And it's referred to as four stages of severity of overgrowth, depending on the symptoms. The list is way too long to list, but here's a few of the common symptoms. Rashes, itching, body odor, smelly ears, reoccurring ear and bladder infections, red skin, sores, scabs, shedding, arthritis, genital discharge, hot spots, and blackened skin. So what am I doing? I started giving Skippy and Little Girl organic plain yogurt, one to two tablespoons per day, and I smash up the cranberry pill. That will provide good bacteria and kill off the bad. The cranberry pill will prevent anything from attaching to his poor little bladder walls. And then I'm doing the natural food. In addition to this natural, no sugar, no GMO, gluten-free, probiotics included, multi-mineral vitamin that you just sprinkle on. And it's made for kids, babies. I know we covered a lot of information, but there's a lot of other factors that you need to keep in mind before you could solve the problem. I hope this helps. Have a great day. This is Paula Patio. Love ya. By the way, I discovered an antibacterial fungal shampoo that does miracles. So please check the links below. Here's an update. <laughs> and the video hasn't even been out yet. I'm having great success with that uh, yeast infection uh, medication that girls use. And I discovered a holistic diet that Skippy will be on and I will report those results to you after we try it. And I think the yogurt is really working because he's not scratching anymore or licking. Look, here's the thing. Number one, I'm not going to give you something that I don't do myself. Number two, if it doesn't work within, we'll say, one or two days, or maybe three, you need to take your pet to the vet. Very, very important. Always, always ask questions and always, always research things. You are their adult human caretaker, and they rely on you very, very much. Okay, have a great day. Mm -hmm.